How are you? Yes, it is morning. We're not doing live at three o'clock today because you've got to do some driving around. You got to go up to Pine and Strawberry today. So we thought we'd record early. And uh, you can't record early without a couple cups of these. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No so, kidding. 7 a.m., folks. We got this guy up to record at 7 a.m. And uh, <laughs> man, oh, man. So, you know, I wanted to, the, I was really looking forward to today because this condo requirement that we're seeing, these requirements, I really want to share with everybody because it's a major pain. And I mean, we can't say that loud enough right i mean it's it, yeah. it, tell us what it is in just like a a sound what what's the change um maintenance deferred maintenance and special sense uh, assessments as far as because of florida a couple of years ago crashing to to the ground um fannie mae and freddie mac is just basically saying We've got to really take a, a deep dive into condos, make sure that deferred maintenance is not, there's no deferred maintenance. I know it's yeah, one, so one, in other words, there's things that need to be fixed. We want to verify that you've looked at it. Number one, that you've got the budget for it. You put money aside. Yeah. We want to see the records to see what you've done. And we're going to go over this checklist because it's going to blow your mind. And, and we want to, well, what we're running into, the problem is on your end and on the buyer's end is... <laughs> You've got this, the usual process of going to buy a condo, just like buying a house. You've got pre-approved. You, uh, you, you got the HOA gave you the CCNRs. You've, uh, you know, got approved for your financing. You're ready to go, but now you're waiting for this document. You've, you've passed your inspection. Everybody agrees on everything, and you're waiting for the HOA to fill out this form and to answer all the questions on this form before you can close and some HOAs are just flat out telling you no, right? No. Yes. Yes. And no. Yes. I wouldn't say yes, they are, but they just don't have the staff to, to basically dig into all these questions. Usually you have one, one or two people that are out right there and they're like, they're busy doing their day. They can't sit and take however long it does it take to fill out this questionnaire. Yeah, let's take a look at that questionnaire. Um, well, I can see it fine. I mean, the first question yeah. kills me. Does the project operate as a hotel or motel? Yeah. You know, are the unit subjects or unit owners subject to mandatory or voluntary rental agreements? So, so we got that. And so basically, you go down the list. This is the checklist that they have to fill out. Uh, you know, how many unit, how many unit, how many unit owners are 30 days or more past due on their HOA common expense assessments? How many unit owners are 60 days or more past on their HOA common expense assessments? Because, you know, if they have a, you know, common, there's you know, different assessments. Then there's these special assessments. Um, you know, let's keep going here. Is the project 100% complete? Is it 90% complete? You know, if it's 100% complete, what do we have here? This is the checklist that they have to fill out that we have to wait for as a lender to get back. Um, are there any current or planned special assessments? Because so a lot of these people that are sitting in the, HO, you know, the office, they might not know these questions. So they leave them blank. And if they're blank, that's going to, you know, it's not going to stop the deal. But then you got to go in and you got to get the HOA meeting minutes. Um, you know, you, have to, you, you can't just leave something blank because obviously it's like an underwriter that leaves something blank. It's like, okay, there's a problem here. So that's basically what they, this is what they have to fill out. And this is the that's the this questionnaire is what they don't fill out for about three to four weeks and before you know after they get it. And the problem is, like you know, you and I have talked about and we've seen it that um, uh, you know you're a week you're a week away from closing. Yeah, you're a week away from closing and you haven't got this form. And then when you do get it, there's check boxes missing, which. I mean, think about it. You've got somebody there at the HOA whose job is to do a certain function and you hit them with this form and they're going, well, I don't know the answer to that. I'm just the person that collects yeah. the payment. So they just gloss it over. So, and then now you've got people that, um, you know, manage the DHOAs saying, wait a minute, I don't want the liability of somebody filling this form out. Um, I don't want to just sit back 
and rely that the person filling that form out is going to be accurate, we need a verification process on our end. In other words, yeah. they fill it out. Somebody else is going to have to go in and oversee it. So, you know, to make sure, because there's a lot of liability in that form. Oh, there's yeah. A lot of totally. liability of, of condos saying, yes, this was done. No, this wasn't done. Uh, how far along is the project? Is it 90 percent? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, a special assessment is repairing the roof. OK, you didn't save yep. enough money to repair the roof. So you had a special assessment, which everybody was billed, you know, eight hundred to two thousand dollars one time. And then now they got to fix the roof. So I don't think the person at the HOA could tell you whether that roof's 50 percent complete or 90 percent complete. And yeah, yet, yeah. FA, you know, and Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac want this information. So this is really slowing down condo purchases. And you've sent me a couple examples where lenders have said um, they've just flat out told me, no, the legal department won't let me fill this out. Yeah, I just sent you one uh, that one email from one, one of our LOs. Now, let me preface this by saying this. That's a full review, question review questionnaire review. If obviously if a, if a condo basically keep it simple, if a condo unit is you know approved they have the, the approval is, is for a couple of years but if they let that approval ex, bottom line is if they let that approval expire they got to get go through the whole you get the questionnaire there's there's what's called a limited review too it's not quite as extensive a questionnaire but it's still a questionnaire bottom line it's called a limited review so sometimes you can get a limited review on on a condo but the whole point that you and i are trying to make is that um Correct me if I'm wrong. A lot of people think, and we're not trying to, you know, be, you know, we're probably a little bit more anti-condo just from the fact that there's always these little prickly, prickly little things that come up. But um, you just have to be aware, I mean, um, of what's going on. Um, well, does that, can, oh, let's go back to that form for just a second. So that doesn't have to be filled out for every transaction. They just have to do do that to get approved. In other it's words, probably got to be filled out more than you think. Let me put it yeah. that way. Okay. You know, it's not, it's, it, uh, no, well, it's sometimes it's not, well, sometimes it, there could be a full review. If they don't have, it's, it's hit and miss. It's, it, it, there's a, there's a list. Remember you, I, you, I sent you that, uh, thing. Um, you said the checklist where you're going to pull yeah. up that checklist. Yeah. It, Here. the Fannie yep. uh, unavailable list, check Fannie approval list. Yeah. Check the FHA VA, check the lender database. Now, so if you're selling a condo, and I think we we're, I was, making a comment for Sean because he's selling a condo in Gilbert. Uh, it's either Gilbert or Mesa, but my advice was to get proactive and get a hold of the HOA and ask them about this. Do you have this? Have you been approved ahead of time? Yeah. Make sure that if you're going to sell your condo, that you know what the status is. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's important is, to know that. You don't want to find that because I mean, it, it's, it's always hard to get information from the HOAs in a timely matter anyway you know you're you're everybody wants clothes in 30 days and on something like this they probably aren't even taking a close look at it until day 25 and yep. you're, you're trying to nail down this loan and 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 uh you know so the seller's calling you go where are we at pat and you're going well we're still waiting for the hoa stuff and you're calling them well we haven't filled it out yet yeah uh, when do we expect it well we don't know well we don't know yeah so we, the well, seller's like why that? haven't we closed yep you know, just go back to that checklist. You can you go back to that checklist. I mean, that that's kind of what we're trying to warn people on is that, you know, if condos were so easy, you wouldn't have this checklist, like check the unavailable list, check the approved list, check the, you know, database. You have to check. Bottom line is, I guess, to sum it all up, check, you have to check out a lot of stuff before you buy or sell a condo, I guess. that's That pretty much sums it up. Yeah, so I say we're not, anti-condo but we're saying they're a little problematic at this point yeah and and the thing is i think well as the point i was going to make but the train was coming through the tracks i kept going i couldn't remember what i was going to say but um you know a lot of times a lot of people will say well i can't buy a house so i'm going to buy a condo right not that they're not you know if you're a single family not not necessarily so because if you got three kids if you live in an apartment you're moving from basically one apartment to a glorified apartment condo condos are good for obviously you got maybe a couple, you know, uh, millennials that, you know, or people are working from, you know, downtown, whatever. But um, it's a lot of people, I think you probably heard this, correct me if I'm wrong, as an agent. Well, I don't qualify for home, but I'm just going to see if I can buy a condo. 
Well, that's been my personal experience, Pat. Well, that was my yeah. very first purchase was I bought a condo mm -hmm. for $34,000. And my thought was, and I didn't know a lot about real estate then. I was driving a bread truck. And I thought, yeah. well, I'll get this condo. And then when it goes up in value, I'll sell it. In the meantime, I'll save as much money as I can to be able to get into a house. Well, I got yeah. into a condo and the market went into a tizzy. Uh, this is back, back in the early 80s. And so my condo wasn't worth as much. They started dumping them in there. So, you know, that 34,000 I paid, now they're selling them for 26 K and, uh, and it was moving into a glorified apartment. Now I, I was fortunate because I, I made really good friends with the couple down below and, uh, I got married living that place. So we, we all got along. There were like four of us in this little corner and, uh, and everything was great, but you're still, um, in an apartment, you know, the walls are, you know, they can hear us walk and talk. We can hear them. Um, you're just owning it. And it took me 10 years to get rid of that thing. Yeah. I put down yeah. $3,400 and bought that thing. And uh, then I sold it 10 years later. Ironically, I got a check for $3,400. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's funny. That was after well, another thing too is, the other thing is too, is now uh, actually because of the Florida situation uh, that happened, the collapse of the Florida condo, um, the bottom line is they're on, they're really tightening up on deferred maintenance and special assessments. Um, you know, it says here, uh, where projects have completed, completed a structural or mechanical inspection within the past three years, the report, this mechanical, oh, this report repair report must be re obtained for a review. And it says here that, um, projects with any unfunded repairs costing more than $10,000 per unit that should be undertaken within the next 12 months are ineligible. So there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that came down that, um, you know, is coming have come down and are going to probably come down in terms of just checking, double checking these special assessments, you know, cause they're, they're now the concern about, you know, all the repairs that might have to be done on a condo. Well, they're certainly not making it any easier and, and you can't blame them. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it's very interesting, but anyway, Pat, <laughs> um, <laughs> It's good to uh, good to be back. We're going to be live yep. next Friday. We'll be back to our live at three, uh, missing some of our peeps that we see out there. And uh, so for today, have a safe drive up to Pine and Strawberry, and we will catch you on the flip side. All right, buddy. Take care. See ya. Have a good have a good weekend. Bye.